Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I am John Lowe, the owner of a John Lowe Cage Fighting Series, going down November 12th in the heart of San Francisco, Keys Hall Pavilion. Once again, we have a wonderful young and up and comer making his professional pro debut, Ozar. I can't really pronounce your name correctly. Can you introduce yourself to all the MMA fight fans out there? Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Osamon Oyamolin, but you can call me Ose. Ose. That's Ose. a little easier to, yeah. uh, to, uh, to pronounce your name. Now, Ose, how long have you been fighting as an amateur? Oh, man, I, I made my amateur debut in 2019, so about three, four years. Yeah. So. That's, a, that's a fairly good amount of time. And I know you've got to, you pretty much stay busy in your entire amateur career, uh, except, uh, you know, the COVID yeah, kind of delay a couple yeah. years. So now, how many total amateur fights that have you had? Uh, in total, across from MMA and boxing and kickboxing, about... 14 amateurs. Damn, that's a good amount of experience in the yeah. last few years. Now, how old are you, Jose? I'm 23 years old. 23? Yes, sir. Wow! <laughs> now, before you choose in fighting, have you choose another profession as a professional athlete, as an athlete in general, because you are uh, six foot four? Yeah, I was playing, I was playing football and wrestling for like about, maybe from the time when I was about in seventh grade, I started playing football and wrestling. I actually thought I was gonna go to the NFL, but you know how that, you know how that goes. That's yeah, pretty so, awesome. Yeah. And where have you born and raised? Uh, I was born in Berkeley, California, but I grew up in Antioch, California, about 45 minutes from here. So you're really a native of a Bay Area? Yes, sir. Wow, oh, that's right. pretty awesome. Because, you know, Bay Area is such an expensive place to live in, and you see people time and time, they just move out here a few years and then move somewhere else. You know, you don't really see too many people that actually, like, stick with here and just born and raised and grow up all the way through, you know? Yeah, shout out my parents. That's pretty awesome, though. So you got a pretty strong follower in the Bay Area. Yes, sir. That's nice. Now, let's talk a little bit about your upcoming fight. So you are making that step, a blue pill and a red pill. Now you're taking the blue pill. It's right, you got to go pro. Yes, so um, obviously, 23, going pro, I can see you probably making fighting as your career, yes, not as a hobby or a bucket list, you know. So, um, and you are fighting a guy actually beat you before at the amateur fight. Uh, Luke Burrow. Um, what's your thought of him? Uh, I mean, honestly, he's a solid. He's a solid guy. Like uh, we actually kind of we became friends over the last three years. We fought about three years ago. We actually became like pretty good friends. Like I have nothing but respect for him. He comes from a solid gym, you know. So I just feel like this fight's gonna be a, a good test for the both of us, you know, to see how far we've come in these last three years. Right. Well, I've seen you coming off wins after wins and uh, coming off a lot of W's and uh, on your camera website. So now. Let's talk a little bit about the first time when you guys meet in the cage as an amateur three years ago. How did that fight go down, and uh, what's the result the whole night? Uh, I mean, the first time, the first time we fought, I was pretty young. Like that was like my first year fighting, actually. So uh, the fight it ended it ended in a rear naked choke. He ended up getting me in a rear naked choke. But prior to that, I feel like we were having some pretty good exchanges in the grappling and the striking aspect. And like you know, I just felt like that fight. Um, he had it over me because he was, I feel like personally coming from the gym that he was, he had a little bit more experience than me. I wasn't at the best gym at the time. So, you know, uh, two years ago, I switched over to start training with Steven Child, Omni Movement, Hercules. So I feel like once we, once I made that switch and I was able to kind of take the proper steps in order to like actually become a true martial artist. And I feel like that was a huge shift. So I believe we'll see that in this fight coming up. It'll be a very, it'll be a whole different fighter. You know, it's not going to be the same guy that it was in 2019. It's going to be a complete martial artist now. Now, as far as I know, like he fought on my show, make his pro debut against uh, Tony Charles. And uh, I thought he's gonna be wrestle, 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 but he actually ended up standing up the fight. I'm not sure, I'll probably, you, yeah, I you probably see that yeah. fight. And uh, I never see Lou fight before, it's from, you know, Sacramento, it's the first time, uh, you know. So this upcoming fight, everybody's talking about he's a wrestler and you also got a good wrestling base. How do you see this fight's gonna go down? I mean, honestly, like, you know, at the end of the day, it's a fight game. So there's not, you, you could come up with all your predictions and everything, but at the end of the day, it's just going to come down to what happens in that night. I feel like it's going to be a personally good fight. Like, you know how everybody wants to say they know, like, I personally believe that I will come out on top at the end of the day because I put in the work, you know, and I've become a complete fighter and the versatility is key at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that I do have. I'm a very versatile fighter. So it's going to be a good fight, but I do believe I'll come up victorious. Now, this is kind of a weird question because 
you and him, both your guys are not like an ordinary fighter. It's like six foot, maybe even <laughs> six one, six two. And you're six four, right? Six four, yeah. And I believe he's six foot six? Yes. Something like that. Like both you guys are not really that easy to look for a training partner that's similar to the opponent you're going to fight. Yeah. You know, so like how do you simulating that in the training though? I'm a fighting a guy six foot six and now I'm training with the guys five ten, six foot, six one. I mean, for us, like, we adjust, you know, we go everywhere. We'll travel all over. We'll go train with whoever we got to turn with. I have some solid training partners that can very much well imitate his type of fighting style. So I have taller guys that I train with, so we're just going to get back in the lab with them and just get after it at the end of the day. That's pretty awesome. Now, if you're looking at Luke from his last performance, where do you see the the the, the areas that you have advantage on? Like, is it wrestling or is it striking? or as a jujitsu now, where do you see yourself you can be overcome him and actually have advantage on him? I mean, I believe, I'm, as I said earlier, I believe I'm a very versatile fighter. So I think wherever the fight goes, I'll be solid, you know, like, he's a, he's a, he's a good wrestler and I'll never take that away from him, but he did display some really good striking in his previous fight. So I just feel like for myself coming into this camp, I'm just gonna kind of just, you know, focus more on what I'm gonna do rather than what he's gonna do. So I just gotta kinda just keep cleaning up the technique, keep everything sharp, and I believe it'll be a good fight. What do you wanna do in the fight? Do you wanna strike with him and try to finish him on there? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's gonna be wherever the fight goes. Like, I would love it to be a striking battle, you know, cause that's what the fans wanna see, but if it ends up being a grappling exchange, then we'll go there as well, so. I mean, you're six foot four versus six foot six. I mean, even I'm a fan of, a, of an <laughs> MMA, like I would watch this fight. I would love to see some striking right there. Yeah, no, this is gonna be a good fight. It's gonna be a good scrap. Good fight, yeah. That's gonna be a good scrap. That's pretty awesome. Now, if people wanna get a hold of you to buy tickets, come watching you fight, how can people contact you? Uh, you can follow me on IG under at mean underscore Olin. Say it one more time. Follow me on IG at mean underscore Olin. Mean underscore underscore Olin. O L E A N. O L E A N. That's pretty awesome. Now, make sure you guys follow this young upcoming uh, fighter right here. Give him a follow. Give him a shout out. And uh, do you have any special? Loved ones, training partners, um, coaches, uh, shout out. Definitely shout out to my team, Omni Movement Hercules. Uh, we would not, be, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the team. They brought me in two years ago when I was on, I was not doing the best, you know? So they took me in and like, you know, we became family over there. And that's just, that was how this all started. This would have never happened if we, if I never made that switch. So shout out to my team. Also shout out to Johnny Santos. Johnny Santos. John Santos. John Santos, there's two of them. Oh. But John Santos at Team Santos as well. I'll be seeing them soon. Ah. Those are my guys. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Those are my yeah. guys. So uh, that's pretty good. Uh, hey, you're watching the guys like you, up and coming, work with a lot of local people that support you, hopefully can make it to the big league. Uh, many, many fighters that fight on my event now is in UFC or Bellator sign. So uh, I'm very curious, like a few years down the line, this interview right here become a history of, you know, Seeing Ozar, where you're gonna be in a few years from now, I can't be pretty telling people, hey, this is the guy making debut on my show. Now he's in UFC. It's sure. gonna be cool. Now, sure. um, any uh, any special training partners um, and also sponsors, uh, supporters that you want to shout out to? Oh man, I have a lot of training partners, but uh, all my guys at the Resistance, Team Santos, uh, Gracie Brentwood, we're coming to work. So I appreciate all you guys. That's pretty awesome. Now, um, if your opponent, Luke, watching this interview, what do you have to say to him? Just be ready. What's the little prediction result? I mean, honestly, like, I don't know where this fight's gonna go, but wherever it goes, just be ready, because I'll be ready. That's pretty awesome. Okay, well, for more information about this upcoming fight card, ladies and gentlemen, check out DragonHouseMMA.com. We are updating the website this weekend. You're gonna see about 20 fights on this upcoming card. Around 12 professional, uh, 10 professional, and 12 amateur. This fight card is about 20 fights, over 20 fights on the card. So uh, it's live stream pay per view. If you guys cannot make it to the event, make sure you guys order your pay per view voucher from DragonHouseMMA.com. And please subscribe my YouTube channel. Help me to grow my YouTube channel and uh, follow me on Instagram, Dragon underscore House underscore MMA. Uh, any last word you want to say to anyone out there? Uh, tune in. It's going to be a good one, honestly. We've been working. We've been here for a long time, so it's just going to make it happen now. Now, beside Luke, I know you got a handful focus on your, um, you know, pro debut. 
Yes, in the Bay Area, does you have anybody that you wants to fight besides Luke? Honestly, I don't even really know many 185ers in the Bay Area. To be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, that's like, true. I think the 185 and like 205 division is kind of light right now in the Bay. You know, I feel like a lot of in the next coming years because of like the amateur scene, like there's gonna be a lot of guys coming up. But right now in the Bay, I don't really know any 185ers that is like that really piqued my interest at least. Who is the toughest guy to have you fought? In your amateur career, kickboxing, mm. MMA, all combined. Oh, I mean the toughest guy. Uh, I just fought a guy uh, about two weeks ago ish, and he was like, he had like maybe like eighteen, nineteen fights, kickboxer. Uh-huh. He was like thirty five years old. They called him Big Red. Like this dude was strong, bro. He just kept coming forward, kept coming forward. I ended up winning, <laughs> by, I ended up winning by decision, but for like two weeks, my legs were hurting, and like that was like that was probably the toughest guy that I've ever actually. What's seen. his name? Uh, Jonathan Christensen. Jonathan Christian. Where does he come from? Uh, Santa Rosa. He's a kickboxer. Oh wow! Yeah, he was probably the most solid guy that I fought. Like just as far as being uh, well rounded and like you, you know, usually like being six foot four, you like you step in there. Guys are more like timid, you know. But like, yeah, he didn't yeah, care yeah. About it. Man, I just kept coming forward, coming forward. I even caught him with an elbow, cut him, and just kept coming forward. And I was like, man, this is gonna be a hard guy to get out of there. While he's 35 years old, mentally he's on his peak yeah. and physically on his prime as well. So, wow, you know, I'm really looking forward to see this upcoming young man, Ozar, making his MMA debut and see how far is he can go in the future. One question is off the chart. Um, Oliveira and Islam Makachev. Oliveira the whole way. Oliveira the whole way. He's super versatile. He's He, can, he has the best jiu-jitsu for MMA. Yes. You no. Know, so I think if he, I think Islam's gonna come out. Islam's not gonna be an easy fight, but I believe Oliver wins by knockout. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's so versatile. Like if you look at, if you awesome. look at Islam's past fights, like he got, he's been knocked out before. Charles Oliver has taken those losses before, but Islam is more of a grappler. Like he's more of a solid grappler. Like if it was, if uh, Oliver wasn't as good on the ground, I'd be like, oh, Islam's gonna dominate him. Yeah. But I think Oliver got it the whole way. And that's gonna be the biggest fight of the year, I think. Oh, uh, for sure. I barely. Uh, Order any pay per views and just go watch, <laughs> like, uh, you know, go to some uh, bars and place watch. But I'm gonna order this one because yeah, this is gonna be the one, one. Uh, it's gonna be a, a shock the world. And I'm curious about how things gonna play out. Yeah, definitely. But anyhow, um, growing up on your childhood, did you have any fights or any problems with anybody? Oh man, uh, when I was in when I was in fourth grade, about 2008, 2009, the financial crisis had hit, and uh, my parents had lost their original home in Antioch. So we had to move to Richmond, California for a year. And like, that was the first time that I've ever seen like, cause I was coming from like Antioch and Antioch at that time was like, uh, it was like a suburbia, you know? Like there was no problems, like crime rate was super low at that time. But then I moved to Richmond and that was the first time I ever seen a fight at school. Oh, and like, yeah, and like I dealt, with, I dealt with a lot of bullying. That's also what kind of inspired me to start fighting a little bit. I dealt with a lot of bullying back then. And that was like the first time, like I was probably suspended from school about like 10 times. I was oh, kicked out of that school. Yeah, I was fighting all the time, almost every week, every two weeks I was fighting. So it's like, it's kind of ironic, but that's how it goes, man. But now I'm just like, I'm super against bullying. And that's also what I what I do here. You feel me? Like I want to give people an opportunity to see that there's a, out, other outlets than, you know, picking on people, you know? So we're stepping in the cage against a, another trained fighter, you know, so. Well, now you fight to get paid. It's your career now. Yes, sir. All right, stay tuned guys. November 12th at Keys Hall Pavilion. Check out more information about the fight card at DragonHouseMMA.com. I am John Lowe signing out. Ozark, good to have you on board, brother. Thank you, sir. We'll see you guys November 12th. Yes, sir. It's Osei, by the way. It's Osei! Osei! <laughs>